This video is on base degeneration of a common base transistor. So by degeneration we mean that we're degenerating the emitter base voltage in the common base. In other words, the emitter base voltage carries now a fraction of the input voltage. Carrying a fraction of the input voltage means that then it can do a fraction of the current. Let us see that a little bit more specifically here. In the case of a common base, uh, the base is not used as an input or an output. So the input is the emitter and the output is the collector. In the common base, then we can, uh, we oftentimes we ground, we have no small signal variations at the base. So when we apply an input voltage at the emitter, we see that the emitter base voltage carries the entire input voltage. So that's in the case of the non-degenerated base, uh, common base transistor. In the base degenerated transistor, we put a resistance in series uh, with the base. So now what we have is that the emitter base voltage is now a fraction of the input voltage. It's basically lower than the input voltage. As a result, the GM current is going to be lower. But let us see that more specifically, so I'll remove the markers here. So we're going to replace this transistor with its uh, hybrid pi model, its small signal equivalent circuit. And we have our pi between the emitter and base, so it's in series with the base degenerating resistance. We have a GM current. Uh, usually it flows down and it's uh, base emitter voltage into GM. But notice here, I take the, the reverse here. Instead of base emitter voltage, we're looking at emitter base voltage. And that means that we're basically uh, reversing the direction of the current, and that's why the current flows from the emitter to the collector. So removing the marker here. So this is the GM current that is uh, flowing again from the emitter to the collector. And then we have little RO, the output resistance, which is from the emitter to the collector also. So having that, what we want to do is map this out into its equivalent to port network, which will have an input resistance. So we'll figure out the input resistance. It'll have a short circuit transconductance gain, and that's this one, and a short circuit output resistance. So with these three, net, uh, three parameters, we have the two port equivalent circuit for the base degenerated common base transistor. So let us derive each and every one of these, but before we do that, let us look more specifically at this emitter base voltage. And basically we're looking at the voltage from the emitter to the base, and what we notice is that from the emitter to the base there is another resistance which is R pi. So this is a voltage divider here, and then we see that more specifically on this other side, is a voltage divider. And the emitter base voltage is the voltage dropped across R pi. So that's going to be basically uh, the current running through R pi into R pi. So the current running into R pi is basically the input voltage divided by the total resistance of that voltage divider, so that's what we have here, R pi plus R B. That's the current. The current into R pi then gives us the emitter base voltage, so that current into R pi. So we have the input voltage into the total resistance times R pi. That whole thing is the emitter base voltage. So we're going to do here a translation, and basically, instead of looking at the GM current with respect to the emitter base voltage, let's look at the GM current with respect to the input voltage. And then this entire term here, we're going to define it as GM prime, and that's essentially the voltage divided fraction of GM. And that's because we're degenerating with a base, degenerating resistance. So now that we have that, we can now derive the small signal parameters for the two-port network, and we can start with the input resistance. The input resistance is the resistance that we see 
looking into the input terminal. And that's a parallel combination of everything connected to it. So the first component that we see is basically the R pi R B path. So that's the first component of the input resistance is R pi plus R B in parallel with whatever resistance the rest of the circuit offers here. And what we notice uh, when we look at the rest of the circuit here is the same kind of resistance that we see in the basic common base, which when we did that, it, we called it a loaded one over GM. So you see here, um, GM is on the bottom, so that's why it's one over GM, and loaded because it has a loading effect that is a function of whatever resistance we're connecting from the collector to ground. That's the loading resistance. So it's a loaded one over GM. So it's exactly the same expression and the same type of resistance that we had with the common base, except that the GM current is degenerated. So it's a voltage divided fraction of the original GM. Okay, so let us remove markers here. So now that we have the input resistance, we can get the short circuit transconductance. And the short circuit transconductance is the same as the common base, except that the GM current is a voltage divided fraction. So it's degenerated. And then the short circuit output resistance is the same as a common base. And since that output resistance was not sensitive to GM, we see here that it's uh, not a function of that and base degeneration doesn't affect it. So with this, we have the complete two port network that we needed for the degenerated common base. So let us look at an example to see how uh, numbers uh, turn out. So uh, if we assume the, that we have a base degenerating resistance of 25 kilo ohms, we bias the transistor so that it conducts 100 microamps, and we use a transist transistor that has a current gain of 100 amps per amp and an early voltage of 50 volts, which represents base width modulation, and the circuit is loaded with an, a resistance that it's equivalent to its own RO. So what we're saying here is that we have a resistor connected from the collector to AC ground that it's equivalent to the RO of its own transistor. This is just an assumption to, to give us an example and, and to actually see a loading effect. So the first thing that we look at is that the, uh, at the little GM and remember, little gm is the bias current into the thermal voltage. And in this case, that gives us 3.9 millisiemens. R pi is basically beta times greater than 1 over gm. And 1 over gm is 260 ohms. So beta times greater is 26 kilo ohms. Then the output resistance is basically the early voltage, 50 volts, over the bias current, 100 microamps. And that will give us 500 kilo ohms. Now the short circuit transconductance for the two port network is going to be 2 millisiemens. And why is it 2 millisiemens? Because when we see here, it's a voltage divided fraction of the GM. And we have a base resistance here that is 25 kilo ohms. R pi is 26 kilo ohms. So R pi drops roughly half of the input voltage. So what we see is effectively half the GM. So that's 2 millisiemens. The input resistance is 1 kilo ohm. And what we see here is a loaded 1 over GM when the load resistance here is little RO. So we see two ROs, so basically we can combine the two ROs. We have twice RO. GMRO is usually much greater than one. We can cancel the ROs, so it's basically two over GM prime. Two over GM, and remember one over GM is 260 ohms. Two over GM is roughly, let's say, 500. But now we have a degenerated transconductance 
and the, 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 that transconductance is roughly half, so instead of 500, it's actually 1,000 ohms. That's the equivalent input resistance here. And that's actually higher than the common base. And then we have uh, the output resistance. Well, the output resistance is the same. So now we can get the equivalent gain across our circuit. And remember, the equivalent voltage gain is essentially the voltage dropped across the output, which is a transconductance current into the equivalent output resistance, which is a parallel combination of the output resistance of the transistor in parallel with the loading resistance. So the short circuit transconductance is 2 millisiemens, the output resistance is 500, ohm, 500 kilo ohms, and the load is also 500 kilo ohms, we get a gain that is 500 volts per volt. This is lower than the gain of the common base. And it's lower because it's degenerated. We basically degenerated the transconductance because fundamentally the emitter base voltage sees a voltage divided fraction of the input voltage. And in this case is roughly a, a half of the input voltage. So what happens in the MOSFET case? Well, in the MOSFET, everything is the same because we're using three, uh, three terminal transistor. Uh, except that in the MOSFET, R pi tends to infinity. So if we remove markers here, what we're saying is that there's no R pi in the MOSFET. So it's an open circuit from the source to the gate. If it's an open circuit, uh, a, a resistance in series with the gate does nothing to the MOSFET. So basically, a gate resistance, which we'll call R sub G, has no effect on the input resistance of the common gate, has no effect on the short circuit transconductance of the common gate, and it also has no effect on the uh, short circuit output resistance of the common gate. So that's why this video is just simply called base degeneration of the common base transistor and it has no relation to uh, the common gate because it really doesn't uh, affect the common gate. Well, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.